Okay, thanks for joining everybody. Um, my name is Kieran Dines. I work for Talent, and we're an integration software vendor. I guess that's why we might have been asked to host this, uh, this panel today. I wouldn't call them a motley crew, um, but it's definitely the, uh, the key vendors, I think, in the NoSQL space. Um, we have, I guess, starting from our left uh, over here, we have uh, Patrick McFadden uh, representing uh, Datastax. We have Dipti Borka representing Couchbase. We have Matt Cap, is it Kaplan? Callan. Callan, sorry, from Tengen. And we have Jim Weber from Neotech. So I'll let each individual basically, when we, when we kick it off, basically just kind of give, uh, I guess, their flavor uh, in terms of what they, uh, they want to get out of this particular session. But maybe just kicking it off, I just want to get a show of hands just to see who we have in the room. Or, you know, if we start off with who here is a developer or coder that works directly with uh, NoSQL technology? Okay, good. <laughs> All righty, we got a good sense. Um, who's more of an IT manager person that might be looking after either a dev team or kind of making the decisions of which one of these NoSQL databases are more should they be looking to use? Okay, good. And who is none of those things, kind of more business, or has wandered into this convention as thinking it was something completely different? <laughs> okay, best of luck, best of luck. Um, I guess we kick it off and start by uh, maybe just throw it back to the panel. So guys, what do you think we can, we can discuss today in terms of what is standards and conventions? Maybe just try to frame it for each, each person in terms of what you think that might mean as a topic, as a subject matter. So maybe we start with Jim on this side. So Jim, what do you think, it, what do you think this means? for people? Um, so I, I think um, from a kind of IT management point of view, uh, standards are something that gives us a level of comfort. So we're looking for some guarantee that if my vendor goes underwater today, and you know, God forbid these venture funded NoSQL databases would ever go away, they all seem so stable, that I can replace that infrastructure with minimal pain and fuss and keep uh, continuity of service going. I also want to keep my costs low. I don't want to have to relearn things uh, every week when the new shiny comes out. And uh, standardization holds out the promise uh, of, of precisely that. OK, so just to kind of, it's, it's protectionism against you personally, <laughs> who will obviously inherit millions and islands and all great riches once you know, said VC basically takes the cash. Something like that. Yeah, let, 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 let's go with that. OK, OK. <laughs> Cool. Does that go for everybody else? Anybody else want to offer something slightly different, or is it is the you know is it the protectionism or what else? What are the what are the key things that we get? You think from from a session like this? What are we looking to try to achieve? Yeah, I think I think it is about you know preventing um, getting locked into a vendor as we mm -hmm. just talked about. Uh, but it's a little bit more than that. It's um, it is uh, being able to interoperate between multiple systems, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, being you're, being in the integration space yourself, you see the importance of a standard because you don't want to integrate with a hundred different NoSQL solutions coming out, uh, but want to have one way of perhaps connecting with um, uh, with all these systems. And and that's the that's the other aspect of it, which is a, a more practical aspect where you really want to have uh, a broader. Um, integration with um, multiple systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and it also makes the conversation broad. You know, yeah. It's not just one vendor saying, here's how it should be. It mm -hmm. really opens it up to the community, to customers, to users saying, yeah. um, this is, if I, we take a step back, this is how this will fit in our overall enterprise mm -hmm. stack and not just you know, one vendor putting a solution out. OK. So best guess, best estimate, it took maybe 15 to 20 years, maybe 25 years, mm -hmm. to get to SQL 92. So starting from today, uh, we've got some time on our hands to basically <laughs> achieve a certain amount of standards. Maybe go a little bit deeper into sort of the, the tech um, um, in terms of maybe, Patrick, you, you think about what are the intersection points that you might say, OK, what are the best candidates you might hope for for standards that we could look for across the NoSQL landscape? What's possible? What's off, what's off you know, completely just off reservation? You can't do it. Probably the thing that everybody can agree on are the the ones that no one wants to use or talk about like security mm -hmm. you know security is easy because everybody has to have it and it's a commonality if we talk about things like query languages then we have to get into architectures but mm -hmm. if we talk about security everybody sucks at security <laughs> and no one will ever be good at it so yep. if you can come up with the standards around that and there already are plenty of them Mm -hmm. But if you agree that we can maybe adhere to certain standards that are already there and then enhance it with others, mm -hmm. then distributed computing has a whole different 
problem set when it comes to security. Mm -hmm. So, and is security different in NoSQL than you could say in, in normal traditional databases? Are there are there characteristics that are so different in terms of what you guys are doing or what you're seeing, or is it just more of the same? And the really this is about, as you say, basically applying standards uniformly across all these different implementations. Well, the definition. I don't know. I, I can't put a one vendor on this panel that doesn't have a replication story. Correct. Replicating data means that your data is spreading out. Yep. How do you how do you assure someone that you know we're following some sort of standard that your data is okay when it's spread out? Mm -hmm. yep. yeah, there there are difficulties though, right? So mm -hmm. um, at, the, at the surface level, you're bang on, right? We all need to kind of seal off attack vectors. But then imagine things like authorization. Now, on your stack, authorization could well be around atomic documents, right? So you say, right, this, right. this user gets access to this. Right, you guys probably have this more in common than I do. This user gets access to this document. Right. And you could, you could apply some security rules around that, which could be common. But on my stack, uh, the, uh, the security would be a user has a path to some resource in, uh, deeper in the graph. And then kind of I, that's where that's the point which I would diverge from you guys. You'd all leave me behind giggling, saying, oh, you, can't, <laughs> you can't be part of our security party. So you, when you said architecture earlier, that kind of triggered me. It's, like, it's architecture, it's also data model. And yep. it's kind of funny, right? Like, NoSQL, we've kind of been lumped together, uh, even though actually I can, I can uh, enumerate four different data models, uh, even along this table. And we're lumped together under the same umbrella. And admittedly, I'm the oddest by far of the data models represented <laughs> here, uh, unquestionably, right? I mean, um, uh, oh, 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 yeah, it's, uh, but you know, it's not like um, you guys are identical either. And I think anything that's going to be um, properly secure that you could really tie down in a fine-grained and useful fashion is going to have to be accommodating our data model. And I'm not convinced that standardization helps when you get down into that nitty-gritty. Um, it could actually be a hindrance because we'd end up you know, being at loggerheads, I need paths in security. And you're like, well, I hate paths. I couldn't care less about paths. Shut right. up, Jim. <laughs> yeah, I think everything that comes up to the, the, the interface between uh, right at the front end, right, of the database. Um, you would use SSL, for example, over the wire. It's a standard. Everyone would use it, you know, certificates and all that. As soon as you get below that and you start looking at granularity, as, as Jim pointed out, then you get into data models. And the data models are so different uh, with, with uh, Oracle IBM and SQL Server, where it started off, everyone at least had the same relational database and the same relational data model. They might have had different languages with PLSQL still being you know, very, very popular. Uh, and over time, um, DB2 and the others came up with a migration for PLSQL itself, which was still not a standard. So I think the data model piece is where it needs to start. Um, again, there's BSON, JSON, um, you know, there's a column family databases. Every NoSQL database is slightly different. And even before talking about a query language, uh, if we do not have a uniform data model at the back, it becomes very difficult to talk about paths or you know, uh, structures or arrays or ob nested objects. Like where do you start if the data models are not, not really the same? I see a lot of head nodding, but yeah. Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, so that's yeah, there's certainly a way you can do it, but yeah, it's that's what takes longer to really create some normalization of all that. Mm -hmm. Look know. at the automobile industry. I mean, it's it is somewhat standardized on the atom. A bolt has a measurement. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be metric or SAE, which is one of the standards. Yeah, now that's the thing about standards, right? There's so many good ones to pick from. So, um, you know, th there's not a lot of convention within the automobile industry about the exact size of wheelbase mm -hmm. or how big a tire should be or any of that. Mm -hmm. They've determined that we'll all still use the same bolt sizing mm -hmm. or that the steering wheel should be on this side of the car. And you know, Well, clearly we have that right in, in the UK. And in our variation, clearly, <coughs> yeah. in the UK. So, uh, yeah, so if I build a standard car for the UK, it's now on this side. So yeah. there's variation. Yeah as we refer to it as the, the right side. You know, it's a, yeah. it's a correct side, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting here talking about you know, whether we should have standards or not, but I wonder if we should ask the, the audience a vote of whether they would like a query language. That's a good question. Let's throw to, back to the audience. Who the, would like, databases? Maybe, maybe it's an unfair question. Who would like standards? Well, let's just ask that, <laughs> the unfair question. <laughs> <laughs> who would like standards? And then we're going to ask you to ask you the question why, but who would like standards or who would like to see standards? Well, it's, it's no the question, SQL. has anyone been put off NoSQL databases because of lack of standardization? Oh, good. Oh, I think they wouldn't be here. Well, exactly, <laughs> right? It's like, we want standards. Okay. Well, we've already got data in databases. We're getting a great deal of value from it. So well, why do I care? So one thing is, um, we've talked about standards. There are two types of clients. One the one side that's 
tenants that help the vendor mm -hmm. develop something easily maintainably. On the other side, from the consumer standpoint, there are standards that uh, you've got to think about from a consumer standpoint. How do you handle audits? How do you handle security? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you handle uh, authorization systems? Mm -hmm. Security, security, security. Yep. <laughs> Well, the, the right representation is whatever I do, and I will now enforce you guys deviating your roadmap. Whoever is and first. waste your time building to my specification, right? Because that's the other side of vendor uh, standards, right? They're, they're a weapon in a commercial marketplace, yeah. right? Mm. And they can be used in that way. And um, we all muttered earlier before we joined the panel about how, how actually we've all been profoundly damaged by participating in standards. I can't believe you're still smiling. Um, <laughs> um, because, because we're all battle scarred. And actually, I, I, I would hazard a guess that all of us have seen standards being wielded mm -hmm. in a corporate driven, politically motivated fashion. So the downside of standards is actually they choke competition and choke innovation. So be careful what you ask for. Because you might be like making you know, a perfectly viable set of you know, kind of disparate, you know, kind of blooming environment of data stores, boringly gray and the same. And so on that, on that note of positivity, on that note of positivity. <laughs> <laughs> positivity came over here with the, with the Puritans, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. The place where your matter and, and, and Corba and all those things came. And I have participated in, in numerous of those standard uh, things. For example, take your matter. Your matter, it's about, it, it's a team of currently of about 15 to 20 people active, and they are from all kinds of vendors and all user groups. And we sit together and we, we forget that we are in that company XYZ or so at that time. We, we all try to, what is the best word for the language for, for all the big user community. If you pick that, that spirit, uh, the standards can be very successful and very helpful because uh, one other thing which gets you from a standard is interoperability, which is a very important thing. Well, you're talking about a, a common thread, which is object-based languages. We have object-based languages that need a common descriptor language. UML works awesome. Hey, we're a column family database. How's that going to work on a document database? Not. It's just, <laughs> we're talking apples and oranges at this point. So we, right. if we have to do this, we have to find the commonality. It's not going to be a data model. Right. I guarantee it. Right. And, and to, to your point, I think in theory, yes, everyone agrees with the spirit of that, of a standard, right? That everyone thinks independently um, or, you know, to come up with something that's common and that, that would help in, you know, at the end uh, for the greater good of the community. But there's, again, there's the, there's the other side where, you know, I'm, when I'm thinking of my product's roadmap, I want to be agile and fast. It takes a long time to get consensus between people, between vendors. Uh, forget about the fact that a lot of the larger companies, uh, maybe the IBMs and Oracles will probably dominate some of that discussion. Maybe the little vendors might get left on, on the side. So there's, there is a, there's definitely good to it you know, at, when you look at the interoperability, uh, but the, the impact it has on, on the vendor uh, could, could actually uh, be pretty, pretty deep. So I think that, that there's both sides to that, that, uh, that point.
So 18 months is too long for us, right? So 18 months, yeah, 18 months. Well, there will probably next, be another database out there. You're on your next startup in 18 months. Is that five <laughs> versions deep in 18 months? I mean, yeah. Too yeah. late. Yeah. I think there's an element of truth in what you're saying. Sure. And when we are in a new groundbreaking thing, things are moving so fast. Correct. Mm -hmm. Agile is the way to go. Correct. Once we are building products for some of the users, so which means that you can keep building more and more stuff if nobody is using it. Yep. It's all garbage. Yep. So I think at some point in time, what happens is if I'm going to be investing into technology, I'll be expecting a return on investment. Mm -hmm. My core business is not technology. Mm -hmm. I do something else. Energy, okay. Healthcare, finance. I want to get something out of it, which means that. Uh, Having a variety, mm -hmm. but with some kind of a standard experience. Mm -hmm. That is, everybody is going to do the exact same yep. thing. I don't need so many of them. And also, just looking at it, different ways of databases, and uh, Patrick was mentioning, right? So, we have different things. So, we need okay. different things, but then some level of commonality is there. Mm -hmm. It's not that. Pardon me. Think, as it is, I think so, around there. there are a few axes here, I think, and um, I think what, what it would be premature to standardize is the exciting stuff in NoSQL. So mm -hmm. all, all of us, we're, we're, we're doing some quite innovative stuff. Uh, for me, in the, in the graph data world, it's all about graph data models and innovative query languages and all that kind of stuff. Right? And, and standardizing that now, particularly if then we involve these guys who have a radically different data model, that would be both, both difficult and very premature because it would stymie innovation. But there are a bunch of things where I think we have a duty, a diligent duty right now to be standard, right? We shouldn't be baking our own uh, operational uh, counters, right? We should be absolutely standards compliant for all of that. So you can take any one of the databases represented here, drop it in your data center, and your ops guy's like, oh, okay, that's just a database. Because the last thing you want is for your ops guys to find a database to be exciting, right? <laughs> databases, <laughs> have operation, yeah, operationally, databases have a duty to be dull. An exciting database in production is not a good thing. So I think what, where, where, where I think we could start to uh, gain agreement is, okay, let's all agree that we're going to use XYZ monitoring protocol or protocols, right? Let, let's get that kind of stuff uh, 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 tidied away first. And then we can take a step back. How successful was that? Have we, have we tried the, the standardization path amongst a bunch of vendors now? Can they, can they cooperate like grown-ups to make something that isn't? Uh, for them, you know, business critical happen, but which is business critical for the user and customer community. I think once we've got that pathway kind of lubricated, then we can take a step back and think, okay, is there any value in other things you might choose to standardize? And, and I doubt very much whether it will be data model in the long term. I think we're so different. That's going to be, you're going to have to standardize within the verticals. You might mm -hmm. get the document database standard, Correct. the graph database standard, but you're not going to get the NoSQL standard. And in fact, I would uh, go out on a limb here and say, uh, shame on you if you think that you could not learn, <laughs> right? Because this, this, this movement is going so quickly that you are going to have to learn new tech. Uh, you're not going to be able to wrap all this in your you know, schoolboy sequel and hope for the best. So uh, sorry if you thought standards were going to stop you from uh, performing some intellectual effort. They're, they're not. So let's go back. Let's take the next person on the, in the row. That's OK. Yeah, so in, I mean, in concept, the same things apply, right? So you say CRUD or IUD operations or whatever it is, right? But when you, again, go back to the data model, you don't do an insert into table, column A, comma B, comma C, comma D. You're going to do an insert into and, you know, open a curly bracket and put in JSON in there. For family, fa column family, it's going to look different, right? Uh, there, is an, uh, there is a concept of key value. I think there is some commonality there with key and a value, and maybe the value is, it could be, you know, a column family database, it could be JSON, it could be something else, right? So there's, even with the most basic operations, um, currently, right, at the moment, they do look very different for the different databases. I think that, um, at least the way I see it, 
key value access is probably one thing that's common across these databases. It could be a place to start where you at least have the basic insert, update, delete statements, and then you can get into paths and you know, all the other implementation details of the data model, perhaps. Um, SQL is the other thing you mentioned where um, a, lot of, a, lot, a lot of the older, uh, the, the, the generation be before the JSON databases, let's say XML, uh, where we added in uh, a lot of the a lot of the syntax and new extensions to SQL, right? They were they they were popular for for some of the XML databases like SQL XML, right? Um, but when you when you actually look at these databases inherently, they're so different that there is no SQL core at all. And so just extending SQL by itself does not make as much sense. However, I think there is a lot of value in a SQL-like language uh, to to make sure that people can reuse a lot of what they already know, but for a different format, which, ha which has hierarchy built in. So, and, and, and for Couchbase, that's the direction that we're moving in. Again, it's not gonna be a standard. Again, it's gonna be our own uh, language uh, for Couchbase. However, uh, again, you, it's open source, right? So that allows people to you know, pick up a language, perhaps, and, and do more with it, and then, at, Timing is a big thing right, right now. A lot of us are innovating, building in a lot of uh, you know, core features into the product. Maybe two or three years down wins once, you know, as this gentleman said, we have some maturity in the core database, is that's where we start talking about standards, at least for the basic core. I, th I think one thing is worth kind of laying out that, um, you know, SQL uh, is good in certain cases, right? When you really have the power and you want to be expressive about data discovery and querying, joining one field to any other field. Uh, I mean, with Mongo in particular, and I think others on the panel, we see that actually not as efficient for agility. If a developer is in Java or C Sharp or, some, or Python or whatever all day, it's actually not a benefit that I have to learn another language just to s read and write my data. Right, so you know why developers love Mongo is that they use their native programming language, the top 12 languages, and they can insert, uh, you know, read, write directly from their program. Now, I'm not saying that's best in all cases. That's when I have an object, I just want to save it and then get it back. There are other times when I really want an expressive query language, and maybe that's where you know there's there's common uh, there's maybe a need for another language. But really, most people don't want another language. It's only because SQL is already there and people are comfortable with it, they may look for another language, but if you look at application development, I just want to save my object I have. I don't want to have to write a stored procedure, write a big SQL query just to do that. So that's important to realize. Like one might be, you know, the different, if you segment the uses and the usage patterns, you might say one is from programming language. Another might be a query language across, across NoSQL databases, there, there might be a need for that for more data discovery, and that's where SQL is used, or a SQL variant that goes across any database at all, like that would be great, but just people should realize it's not just, a, a, we're not just gonna have a SQL variant for, for NoSQL, because that's not the most effective agile way to build applications a lot of the time. Okay, so, so back in the day when I started in IT, I was in a, a small Irish company called Iona Technologies, which were a great supporter of the OMG. Um, but one of the things we used to always lead with was, was standards. That was huge, you know, distributed object technology. It made a lot of sense. And I guess over time, then these things became commodities. We landed in the world of J2E. Again, you, arguably, it's a, it's, it's a set of standards through the JCP. I guess back to what Dipti just mentioned, you mentioned that wonderful world of open source. When, when you look at the vendors here, and you look at a lot of what's going on with NoSQL, open source basically pervades this part of the industry in the segment. Has open source done away with the need for standards? Um, I mean, it would appear that there are no standards today, yet everybody in this room is using NoSQL. Isn't, is standards just not relevant? Is it just that it's open source and that gives you openness and freedom and flexibility and agility and lack of vendor lock-in. So what's going on with this? What, what does open source mean to this whole conversation around standards? I, I guess I don't see that it changes the need, because the requirement from the customer and the user base is still, you know, that vendor independence and not lock-in. And, and so it definitely, I think the need is still there. I mean, how it, ch I don't know how much it changes the, um, the game. I was talking, I was talking earlier about 
a topic similar to this, and it is good that at least in open source, everyone can start playing with the technologies, and you get a lot of use cases to build standards from, yep. instead of a vendor saying, well, here's what we use, we're gonna submit that to be a standard, and maybe not that many people have used it. Mm -hmm. So maybe good from that perspective, but, yep. but it seems like standards are still very useful. Mm -hmm. well, okay. There is zero, there is no control in open source if you think you have it. <laughs> All right, data stacks, we work with Cassandra, we don't own it. We don't, a lot of the commuters work for us, but not all of them, mm -hmm. they work at other companies. Yep. It's not like we're gonna go in there and impose a standard. Mm -hmm. They'll be rebellion, mm -hmm. it's open source. It's meant to be a meritocracy, <laughs> not a dictatorship. Mm -hmm. And if you're a single vendor with a single product, you can do that because you can say, this is our product, we have product managers and we know exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. We own the code base, mm -hmm. but I mean, for open source companies, the worst thing, there's the F word, fork. <laughs> that happened. I mean, look at MySQL. You have, you have Myra, you have uh, Flock, I and mean, you have, um, oh, yeah. what's another one? Yeah, Drizzle. Yeah. I mean, come on, everything, you do not want that. You want yep. to try to keep it together. So if you're trying to come in there heavy handed and say, look, we're going to start doing these standards groups and everything, just log into IRC and watch the IR. It yep. will get crazy. <laughs> Because no one's going to want to try to just jump into this. And that's why I think what is cool is the unsexy stuff that no one's going to care about. And the best standards committees I've ever worked on is on the most boring, unsexy stuff. And we could all agree on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it does. I mean, it, it doesn't, you know, it, uh, the need for standards doesn't go away because it's open source. I think what it does help uh, do is uh, the code is all open, right? You could look at the, the code, build a driver, or extend the language, or, you know, in, in some sense. And so you could, the user base, the community might actually um, uh, see what they can do with that language. You know, if they like it, maybe they build a driver to Mongo, right? Maybe they build a driver to uh, Cassandra. And so uh, that happens organically a lot more, so that the, as a vendor, I am not pressurized to say, oh, I need to build an API for this, or I need to build an API to another, another product, uh, it might actually just happen. The community might just pick it up, uh, they have access to the code, and, and they could do a lot more with it, which was obviously not, never happened with, with the, the big three relational database companies. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the positive. That is a good point, at least if there are standards that start to come about, you're not relying on the vendors to implement it. I mean, you know, in particular MongoDB, we control the roadmap at least, but but still, there's tons of open source, third party um, adapters, integration points, and all, all that. So that's that's a good point. That at least the standards get start to be defined. They don't you don't rely on the vendor to solidify it. You can't have others in the community to solidify it. It's the meritocracy. Yeah, it, a good idea tends to stick. Mm -hmm. Bad ideas die. Yeah, absolutely. People vote in their feet. So when I was a young man first entering IT, um, I, I was a supplier to a little Irish company who led with the standards first. Is that familiar? I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> so who led with the standards first kind of uh, uh, philosophy, and so did we, right? They, they, they were interested in orbs and interoperable objects, and we were interested in OTS, and uh, blimey, if those standards led to such a pleasant interoperability story for all of us, because those orbs were all talking to each other, <laughs> and our OTS didn't need any modification no to work with Iona's orb at all. Not at all. To be honest, and yep. you know, me and Mr. Vanosky have gone over this a few times after a few <laughs> pints. So let's not, you know, let, let's, <laughs> so let, let's remember that standards aren't always to the letter successful, even if they are developed in a spirit of cooperation and awesome unicornness. Here, here. <laughs> And Vanosky has found himself now in the NoSQL community, <laughs> so what does this mean for uh, us? Indeed, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He's moved away from yeah. Java, from objects, and, yeah. uh, and now from middleware. Absolutely. So. so we'll throw it back to the audience. I would be interested. I think we... He is now a fan of Erlang. That is true. He is forever as as there is an ISO standard for Erlang, it will be yeah. much more successful. Yeah. Is that Absolutely. ISO or NIST? I, I or is that ANSI? <laughs> first no, thing that came to mind, right? <laughs> yeah. So we throw it back to the audience, maybe just for one last question. I'd be keen to kind of then move on to, to wrap up the, the session. So has anybody got any things they would like to throw at the panel in terms of, you know, either feedback, uh, accusations, or other, uh, or what you would like to see in terms of another point of standardization? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That'll be easy. Okay. Uh, just hey, throw we're doing that. We, yeah. we paid him to say that. Power to the people, man. That's what I say, right? Open source. <laughs> Mm 
Good. Okay. The only so. benefit, though, you're right that no one switched from, you know, or not many people switched, you know, in bulk. It did help the ecosystem, though, like BI and, and okay. other tools on top right. of the database. That is, you know, that is one benefit that at least. I want to about. talk about the ecosystem yeah. in a second. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so one See, that's perfectly boring. <laughs> that is absolutely the most boring thing I've ever heard. I my work. Do you work for IT ops or do you work for developers? <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Got a question there as well. Yep. So you would say a set of conventions? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And that probably gonna give us a good, good, you know, view of where we want to be. Technology mm -hmm. is one thing, data separate. Mm -hmm. So I, I think but back to the oh, gen. It's, it's boring Sorry. me to tear. I almost fell asleep, which is a <laughs> sure sign that it's going to work. Because <laughs> I've got my best sleep in a, in a standards committee meeting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Take another point of view here. Yeah. Here's I would re I would recommend an open source ETL tool for that activity. <laughs> Sorry. No, the, con the convention, yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 We care a lot because we'd have half the number of developers <laughs> to connect all these things. But hey, that's another story. The convention. That's a convention. Exactly. Don't use a relational tool on a non-relational database. There's a convention. <laughs> Yeah, and now we need a new convention. How do you manage non-relational non databases? Yeah, and I think to your point, the ecosystem is where it really becomes important, right? I think that, um, I mean, Talent has kind of done that. Uh, one of the few that has actually plugins or connectors, adapters to each and every, you know, NoSQL database out there, or Hadoop or whatever it is, uh, makes it a lot easier for you right? Uh, but the vendor had to do that themselves, right? They had to build individual connectors because there is no commonality between those, between the databases. And that's where, a, that's where a, a, you know, a, some set of conventions or at least 
uh, having a, a mapping between data models might be interesting, right? Um, to see, okay, how do you flatten JSON so you put it into a relational, uh, and then, then it becomes interoperable across platforms, across other systems. Yep. Um, that's where I think in the short term, a lot of the focus needs to be because um, I want to have every other BI tool work with Couchbase too, right? And so um, instead of getting each BI vendor to build a connector for me, uh, I'd rather have something that is, um, let's say, a common API or a common language, at least for the data format, right? If, if it's JSON, then it's JSON, right? And that's a standard right there. So I think that that's where um, we should focus as, as vendors ourselves mm -hmm. is having, um, trying to really uh, uh, understand formats so that we have a common language, if you will, to talk to each other across these systems. Uh, a query language will take some time. It'll take a while for to actually have a database interface, uh, whether it's, it's programmatic interface or a query language across mm -hmm. uh, even a, a document database. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, and I come to this question earlier, but I think what we kind of see today is um, we, we see Hadoop actually being that bridge between a lot of what we see here today mm -hmm. in terms of different NoSQL databases. It's kind of like the knacker's yard for data, as we would call it, knacker being a place that you stick a horse. Um, <laughs> because a lot of what's happening is the data basically gets archived into Hadoop, and that's where analytics basically plays. So a kind of very simple caveman's view of the world, we kind of see that a lot of people are, are installing that type of convention. But I want to ask for, you have a question or a point here? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> is that primarily for things like lineage, or what were you using the metadata for? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we'll wake up Patrick at the end. Sorry, he was sleeping there, Patrick. Is that an exciting or non-exciting <laughs> no, question? No, metadata is almost, almost cool. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd say that's the next phase, for sure. <laughs> I mean, metadata is, is important, but again, it goes to the, the actual use case and the model. And where everyone is different, I think that's, that's going to be a challenge. Um, where do I store customer data? My answer is going to be in about 10 different column families. What's your answer going to be? In a document. Exactly. <laughs> so it's a different answer. So, you know, trying to even address that, again, we're all running back to relational databases, which have been around for so long, saying, well, they had a standard. Well, if they're so great, why don't we still use them? Well, we, we do use them. And the thing is, they do have a standard. <laughs> but the point was made out in the audience that no one, even all that standard has bought us is that I can log into a terminal and probably the SQL I remember from university will work. Maybe. That's what that standard has bought us, nothing more. Because you never switched off SQL Server and replaced it with Oracle yesterday afternoon. You always have a nine month migration plan for your, tra for your costly changeover. So mm. that standard has basically bought us nothing. But just as a challenge at that point, because I'll challenge that one, um, if you look at the Hadoop uh, community, which is you know, somewhat closely related in proximity to this conference, um, they have all embraced an SQL variant on top yeah. of Hive, and you've got to ask why. Now, is it driven because they as vendors feel it's valuable, or their end users basically feel from analytics perspective it is valuable to them? Otherwise, what you would end up basically is just you know, a, a set of different types of you know, Hive QL or other variants for, you know, take Pivotal versus Hortonworks versus Cloudera or SAP, God forbid they would ever implement a standard. See, Hadoop is um, for data discovery, though, yeah. and that's actually where SQL is well suited. Very suited, yeah. Yeah, so it's, you know, NoSQL is more for the operational workload. It's not always a good, yeah. good but, but, but did that same but did that same language make it into the into Pragle? Did it make it into Giraffe? Did it make it into Dryad? Absolutely what are they not. Doing, right? So mm -hmm. again, you've got that same proliferation mm -hmm. of non-standard. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is a thing called Hadoop has a language which fortunately hasn't been subjected to too much vendor squabbling, mm -hmm. right? But it, you know, again, if, if, you know, there's no notion of like the Hadoop languages being prevalent in other Hadoop-like processing infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So you could still have that same shit fight between those stacks. Mm -hmm. How do I migrate from Hadoop to Giraffe mm, in an afternoon? Mm. So it could be the case that we look at the different implementations up here that, you know, as single implementations that standards across the group is quite a tricky thing to maybe consider. But maybe within the product categories, there are room for standards. I do take your point. Security definitely seems to be one of the impediments for any adoption of technology. It's an obvious one. 
Um, but then I think from a, an operational standpoint, how do you actually host and run a database in an environment is a key critical question. So some convention or standards there to help people like that, I think they're good things. I'll take one last question or point from the audience, and then we would ask just for closing remarks. As, yeah, on behalf of the OMG, sorry, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So you'll be outside basically with polling car and mm -hmm. sign up registration forms for the OMG. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. But a, a, a final point or a final question then to the panel? I was, to hoping not to, I was hoping not to have to mention object-oriented databases today, but yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. I noticed yeah. there was an extra seat. Yeah, yeah there was an extra seat. And, yeah, there was an extra seat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So t to that, to your point, I think, you know, it just goes back to the data model. All those modeling, all those modeling tools and all those, um, you know, conventions and standards worked great because we were working all of them on top of a relational database, right? Uh, but uh, and maybe some different types of data models. But uh, here, where we are, where we are right now, at least, <laughs> it looks so different in our world that sometimes it's hard to look at Patrick and even talk. Yeah. Um, but but, but it, and that's kind of where we are right I've now. Heard that before. And there's a good, I think, a very good point made by this gentleman in the middle here that the the, the rapid innovation is kind of what I would imagine most right. people here are looking for. And keep the openness and the flexibility, and just keep rocking because you're doing a great job. Depending on which you know. Depending on which flavor of database people want to hear, I mean, that seems to be what you're kind of saying, guys. Just keep going. You're doing a good job. So that's a kind of a thumbs up, I guess, from the audience. Maybe get closing remarks from Neotech, and we will then we'll wrap it up. From Neotech, oh, blimey. Uh, what would Neotech say? I don't know what Neotech would say. What, what I will say is that um, we, we, operational <laughs> standardization is going to happen. It's going to be driven by market forces. Mm -hmm. If you don't play nice with, with other systems in the data center, you won't get adoption. Mm -hmm. uh, standardization, a data model at query language level. We're still busy innovating at this point, so any effort to standardize is premature. It's going to stifle innovation. Yep. Watch this space, right? Yep. Give us another decade, we might think about standardizing <laughs> at that level. It's not too long, because you're still using the databases and getting great value from them, yeah. right? Matt? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it, from, from our perspective, the things that would most help, de you know, and common um, desires in all of us, yeah, is definitely the operational and, and the kind of the security and all that. That probably is the lowest hanging fruit. Um, also, the ecosystem, though, I mean, all of us would like, you know, when you switch databases from relational to a NoSQL database, it's not just switching the database, it's switching the BI tool, the reporting, ETL at least, ETL is easier, and, and you know, there's vendors supporting it already. Um, but that's the other thing driving, would drive adoption for all of us, would be if there was a standard, at least for BI. Otherwise, the BI vendors just have to write to each of us, which they are doing. Um, I think Mongo more than others, but you know, that's my opinion. Um, but yeah, I, it seems like things are changing so fast and not really uh, consolidating on a single usage pattern mm -hmm. that it might be hard okay. to do that soon. 
Jipti? Uh, well, standards have the, the good, the bad, and the ugly, as we've talked about. And I think uh, it will be a while before we have uh, particularly a programming interface or a query a language across um, across the same database. I think we, um, it, it, we're we working in the right direction where both databases like Mongo and, and Couchbase are building into, uh, adapters to, to common tools. I think that's where it should start. Um, but it shouldn't prevent us from you know catching up with, on coffee every now and then and talking about standards yeah, because there is, there, are, there is the good part of it yeah. that, um, that hopefully will come along. And do you think that will be driven mostly by the ecosystem or the vendors themselves will, will get together and have that chat? Well, it will depend on what the space looks like, right? I mean, um, I think for for it to happen, the space in, in general needs to continue growing, which means that each of us need to, to collaborate more than, um, you know, compete in some sense for standards. Uh, and also to depend on what, what the other bigger database guys do, right? We could see consolidation, we could see, yeah. uh, we could see uh, a company being bought by someone and putting a SQL mm -hmm. layer on top. Uh, but it's hard to say. I think right now it's, it's the phase where we're into innovating heavily. Yeah. And, um, and and we'll take it from there. Okay, good. Patrick? I mean, I, <laughs> I don't want to be inflammatory. <laughs> no, I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, it's clear, I think, to everyone in this space that we're innovating quickly. We really don't want standards right now. Uh -huh. And there are some standards that we are doing that are small and, and, like I said, boring, for lack of a better word, but just things that have to be done. Give us a decade. I like that. And <laughs> when you see a standards body being formed at OzCon, pay attention because that's where it's going to happen. Good point. Open source is going to change the way we think. We thought differently about the way we manage our data. Let's think a little differently about how we manage standards too. Good. So I think we'll leave it there. I'd like to really sincerely thank all the panelists um, for basically joining today. Um, Hopefully, and again, I would I'd actually thank all of the uh, you guys here in the room for basically contributing. Um, I guess we're around afterwards if you want to follow up and uh, talk about war stories of OMG, <laughs> JCP, all that type of stuff. And uh, if you want to solicit, you know, Jim, Patrick, Dipta, or or Patrick to join the OMG, I think they'd be more than happy to basically have that conversation afterwards. So thanks very much, everybody, and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.